What's going on growers? It's James Brizioni coming to you live from Jersey today. Me and Tucker are going to show you the one thing we did that eliminated 90% of our pest problems and show you the incredible production we're getting as a result. Let's go! Look at these beds. Check out how well everything is growing. We just need to take a peek at just everything. It looks incredible in my opinion. Check out these brassicas right here. Look at the beauty, the health, the vibrance, the vitality. I mean, you love to see it. And these lettuces over here, these things look so good. I think I'm just gonna have to harvest one right now. This variety is a, it's a fantastic one. I think it's called the, uh, the Lala Rosa. Look at the purple leaves on the outside, the green on the inside. Let me just harvest one of these real quick. Four of them in one square foot. It's gonna be a fantastic snack. Check it. And the spinach, I gotta start harvesting the spinach. There's just so much spinach in here. A bunch of different varieties. Tuck wants snacks too. We're gonna have to grab him something in a bit because he's gonna get antsy, but another variety of spinach back here. Look at that, I mean, no issues. And the thing is, I haven't had to spray these beds or do anything with them yet. All I did was the one simple thing that I'm going to share with you. Before I tell you, I wanna check out this kale over here. Check out these kales. Right here, the walking stick kale. Look at the size of these leaves. No bug bites on them, check it out. And the dino kale, I love this one here, the lacinato. Come to the left, we've got my favorite variety of kale for the flavor and the beauty. This is the dazzling blue. Look at those purple stems. It looks like something out of a magazine. And the scarlet kale right next to it. Just, uh, breathtaking in my opinion. In a second, I'm going to bring you over to a section where I stopped doing this one thing and you can see the major difference that it made. Before I do that though, I need to show you just a few more things. Like this bed over here, check out this purple dragon cabbage. I believe that's the name of it. Look at the health of those leaves and the size of them. I had issues growing this in the past, but this year it's just growing so well. Check this out over here too. This is one I've never grown before. This is the wasabina leaf mustard. Look at the frill on these. I think this is one that Tuck might like the taste of. Look at him just show up. He came out of nowhere. He knows he's about to potentially grab a snack, right boy? So let me just harvest one of these. Look how, look how insane that looks. That is awesome. Tuck, you think you might want a stalk of this? Let's see if he wants some of these. He's been liking the, uh, the Mizuna what he's been snacking on usually, but he loves the, the stems on the cabbages because they're full with water. So we'll let him snack on this while we keep going. We'll move over this way. This is what he's been snacking on regularly. And look at the health on this stuff. Let me bring you over to one other section real quick. There's birdies raised bed over here. Check, <laughs> check how well things are doing in this spot. I did the same thing here. I used that one technique and it just made the health of the plants incredible. Check out the dead on Savoy. This one has, it takes about 100, 105 days to grow. So it's a long season cabbage, but it's worth it for the texture, the beauty, the flavor. And then for some more quick cropping cabbages, over here I've got my favorite variety to grow. This is the New Jersey Wakefield cabbage. You gotta grow the local varieties, especially if, uh, I mean, I gotta represent Jersey, it's where I'm from. I wanted to mention one thing, to check out the, if you wanna raise bed, that's, Reliable, it's easy to assemble, high quality, and will last a very long time. You gotta grab one of these birdies raised bed because Epic Gardening is having a massive sale on the raised beds right now. So if you want to add a few, now is the time to do so. Just make sure to use the coupon code TUCK at checkout. Now, let me bring you over to the bed that I'm really having the issues with because I stopped doing this one simple thing. Check it out right here. The evidence is right on it. Check that cabbage worm right there. Look at the damage it's done. So in this spot, I haven't done that one thing and it's really made a major difference. My plants are struggling as a result. Now, let me show you what I did to eliminate 90% of my pest problems and it's always better to prevent issues rather than having to manage or deal with them. I'll also mention in this video, if you have some pest problems, how you could better manage them and how I manage them with some different kinds of sprays and different techniques. So what I used to prevent all those issues was just a simple insect netting. I know it may sound basic, but I'm telling you, this insect netting makes all the difference. The proof is in the pudding. Look at these plants. And it makes it so much easier to have to grow things when you have a form of protection like this. So the thing is, this insect netting, it, it's more versatile than you think. 
it does more than just protect your plants from pests. I want to take you to another section where the insect netting has made a massive difference. Before I do that though, just take a quick scan of the backyard of the food forest. Look how well everything is coming in. I mean, we have the keyhole bed, the birdies beds. We've got the mini pallet bed back there. More beds as you go left and right. Pears loaded with pears. Tomatoes starting to really get their hit the growth cycle where they're starting to really trellis up that trellis that we built. I love the look of it. I want to take you into the food forest though, the older food forest, and show you one of the issues that has really been resolved. The area I'm taking you to is in the back corner. So let's just stop real quick and take another overview of this food forest to look at it. The cherries, all the different kinds of beds, apple trees, I mean, <laughs> hazelnuts, anything you can think of, it's, it's growing back here. Tomatoes all on the ground. We're gonna be staking all these up and the, they're just looking great so far. They need, I need to get the stakes in, I just picked them up recently. And we've even got potatoes growing over here. Onions are gonna come up. I wanna take you over to these peas though. Let's check this out. So these peas here, they're doing incredibly well. Let me just pull this up. In the past, I really had issues growing my peas. I couldn't find out what it was for a long time. Then I realized that it was the birds. The birds would eat the shoots when they're young. Now I don't have that issue anymore because the insect netting provides the protection that I needed. Now they're growing really well. Cool thing about peas is that you don't need bees to pollinate them. So I can leave the insect netting on the whole entire time. This way, the only thing that can get to my harvests is me which is really fantastic. I don't have to worry about something coming in and stealing my harvest because that could be kind of devastating when it comes down to it. So the insect netting, like I mentioned, it doesn't just keep out insects. It also does a number of other things. One of the things that it does is it really um, reduces the amount of wind damage to the plants. So when the winds are really strong, like I wrote a note to myself in like previous years, I basically was like upset, I said, Growing in April, like the shoulder seasons, growing in April isn't even worth it. It's so windy that the plants can't even grow. They just get whipped around like crazy. But now, when I use the insect netting, the insect netting takes the brunt of the wind. So it doesn't like get rid of the wind, but it just takes like, it reduces the damage to the plants. So the plants aren't getting babied along, but they're just not getting whipped around. This way they can actually grow and they're not only just surviving. Not to mention how valuable the insect netting is in the shoulder season when you could get some hailstorms and stuff. So if all of a sudden a hailstorm comes when I've got that insect netting on, I'm not worried about it because the hail will just bounce right off and it won't actually damage my plants. I put the insect netting on my beds when I first transplant out my young seedlings because when plants are young, that's when they're most susceptible to pests, hail, wind, all those different kinds of things. So it's important to have your bed covered at the start so none of the pests can get in. They're kind of all you know kept out by that insect netting. Another thing is the insect netting will protect your plants from rabbits, um, groundhogs, and even squirrels. I've had some squirrels recently that have come into my garden and dug up my beds, the ones that I didn't have covered, because they were just looking for nuts. They weren't even going for the plants. They were just looking for nuts, but they still caused some issues. It's a good feeling when you can go inside knowing that your beds are protected. It really, it ensures safety and it just gives you a lot better feeling knowing that nothing can actually get into your garden. Another thing I do is to protect my young seedlings, I also use this cover right here and an insect netting. So when I first set out my young plants to harden them off, my brassicas and things, my lettuces, I don't like go to sleep and wake up to all them decimated by some kind of rabbit, groundhog, or something that just wants to get at the good food. Right here in the keyhole bed, here's some evidence of the squirrels. They almost made it personal, it feels like. These squirrels, last year or the year before, they dug up my peanuts, stole them, and then buried them back in my bed, and then they'll go around and dig them up. So fortunately, they didn't destroy any seedlings this time, but I mean, right here too, there's just evidence of more of the peanuts that they stole from me. They stole them because I didn't have the bed covered with an insect netting. Now in the future, when I grow my peanuts, I'll make sure to cover them. Hey, duck, stop, boy, take it easy. I'll make sure to cover them. This way they can't steal my peanuts and then destroy something when they're digging it back up. So in the back here, I grow a lot of my cucumbers. So the cucumbers, if you're gonna cover those with an insect netting or 
any other kind of plants that need bees to pollinate, just make sure you take that insect netting off once the flowers start to show. This way they can get pollinated by the bees. I also like to use the surround kaolin clay to protect my cucumbers if it's in a spot where I can't use an insect netting. And that kaolin clay is really nice. It forms a protective layer on the outside of the cucumbers and it makes it so the dreaded cucumber beetle, which is what we're trying to avoid, can't, or not only can't, but doesn't want to get to the cucumber plants because if it does try to get to the plants, the surround kale and clay kind of like gums up their antenna and it just makes it hard for them to navigate. I also use that clay to protect other plants that I can't get an insect netting over. For instance, my fruit trees. So you can't use an insect netting or, you know, to protect the whole entire tree. But what you can do is use the clay spray to protect a lot of the fruit. You'll notice that this spray doesn't have as much protection right now because we just had a bunch of heavy rains so what i'm going to have to do is go through and put another round of spray in the plants but the spray does actually hold up relatively well even after a rain it's just if you have really strong excessive rains then it does get washed off but regardless it's nice always having that form of protection to make sure you're ensuring yourself bigger better more consistent harvests if you didn't do a good job of using insect netting to protect your plants like on this one here and you've got cabbage worms already on your plants then what i suggest you do is use some bt this stuff works fantastic for cabbage worms and it really <laughs> i love the stuff it works amazing tuck's getting a little antsy he wants some more snacks this guy's trying to get in the video a little bit more Got to pay him a little bit more attention because uh, he knows he's really the star of the show. So he gets a little annoyed when I try to steal some of the camera time from him. Hey boy, get down. We'll give you a snack in a little bit. Also, the BT works really well if you have tomato hornworms because this works on most um, caterpillars and worms and stuff. So this is a really good one for the cabbage loopers, cabbage worms, and tomato hornworms. If your issue is slugs, then I suggest you try Sluggo. That's a really good product as well. And I don't really have an issue with slugs here, so I don't really have to use it much, which is really nice. If soft-bodied insects are your problem, then I suggest you use cold-pressed neem oil mixed with dish soap. And you wanna make sure that it has the azadirachtin in it. So the cold press is, you wanna make sure you get 100% cold-pressed neem oil with the azadiracta. That's really what's gonna attack those insects and kill them off for you. This way you could get some good harvests. That's if you didn't do a good job with your insect netting because like when it comes down to it, I'd say about 90, maybe 99%, I guess more like 90% of the issues, they're from insects. So when you avoid the insects, then you're removing so many problems. It just uh, makes everything so much easier for you instead of having to manage the insects. It's uh, so much better. Plus when the insect netting helps to reduce some of the wind damage and also the hail, then that's like most of the problems right there. The only thing the insect netting doesn't directly, um, you know, prevent, what are you doing boy? Is, is disease issues. But when it comes down to it, if you have the insect netting on, then you're gonna have less issues with disease because you're not gonna be having insects which are carrying disease from one plant to another plant. And you're also not gonna have insects that reduce the, um, health of the plants which then the plants have a higher chance of getting diseases so just by avoiding all the pests you're also indirectly going to avoid a lot of diseases so the insect netting like i mentioned it does more than just keep pests out of the garden before me and tuck let you go there's a few more things we want to show you look at this bed right here the two-tier bed look at the garlic growing in here this is the healthiest, biggest, best garlic that I have ever grown. I can't wait to get a harvest from this. It looks like it's going to be absolutely massive. And here's the mini pallet raised bed. Things are growing really nicely in here. We've got some flowers tucked in the back, some flat leaf parsley here, lettuces that are almost ready, broccoli in the back, another lettuce. We've got some other flowers. I think these are petunias that are gonna be coming up. I wanna show you the blueberries and stuff too. This one right here is the pink lemonade blueberry. It's absolutely loaded with fruit. And I love these ones. They have that beautiful pink color, but also a really nice flavor. And it's right next to, I think this is the Patriot, which has a darker blueberry. So with the two next to each other, it's really an awesome contrast. Look how big they've gotten. And they're growing right between two pear trees. Here's an Asian pear with a lot of nice pears on it. Looks great, although I do need to hit it with another layer of the surround kale and clay. And then another Asian pear over here. This one doesn't have as many pears on it, but it still does have a good amount. So we're excited for those harvests. Over here, I wanna show you one of the apple trees, our earliest producing apple tree that's doing real well. But look at the tomato here. Here's a lemon boy. 
and I'm still planting tomatoes. I stick them in all areas that are open. Like over here, there's a section that's just like all open, but I'm gonna be putting a lot more tomatoes in. And like I mentioned, I got my bamboo steaks, so we'll get those in the ground and really start staking up those tomatoes. Check out the Williams Pride apple though. This thing has so much fruit on it. I did a relatively good job of thinning it. I have a little, little more to thin, but you love to see that. Some apples starting to get larger. We're getting every day closer and closer to some fresh apple harvests. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. It might seem simple, but it makes an insane difference in insect netting. I'm telling you, this bed right here has got to be like the healthiest, best looking raised bed that I've ever grown. The amount of food packed into the small amount of space, the health of the plants, the vitality, it's a, uh, Everything is coming together, and I'm so excited to be able to share with all you, me and Tuck. We wanted to mention to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. This is a limited time thing. Grab one of the Gardening is Life shirts with the flower of life right on it. We also wanted to send a thank you to one of our new channel members, Jill Susan. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. If you guys find value in the video, then we ask that you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share with your friends, and also we ask that if you want to be a part of the team to hit the join now button. This way you can follow along with everything we're doing. You can feel like you're part of the team and uh, you know you can just be part of Team Grow. That's really what it's all about. The end goal is to grow as much food as possible, but to, sh to help other people grow food. Because we can only grow so much in our own backyard, but if we share this idea with a lot of other people and everyone's growing in their backyard, it's unimaginable how much food we can really grow. Tuck's come over to say a thank you to everybody too. He said he wants to grab one more little snack just to have a couple bites to show you guys how much he loves eating his veggies and how much he loves being out here. Let's grab a quick snack for him. These things must be good because they seem to be one of his favorite snacks in the garden this year. He's like going around and looking for all of them, so it must be good stuff. That's today's video though. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you got something out of it. Tuck and James will be back again real soon. We out.